students today we are doing class 9 physics second chapter motion in one dimension motion in one dimension dimension first we will see the terms related to the motion okay so in the previous chapter we have done physical quantity quantity so say what is physical quantity so physical quantity the quantity which can be measured measured which can be measured is a physical quantity the quantity which can be measured is a physical quantity like uh, example we can write <coughs> mass volume uh, pressure force distance time etc any quantity which can be measured is a physical quantity okay so uh, we can also write physical quantity is a product of numerical value into unit now the definition for the physical quantity we can also write physical quantity is the product of numerical value and its unit uh, let's take one example so the quantity of sugar okay is here yeah, 5 kg the quantity of sugar is 5 kg then we will understand that we unit used to measure the mass of the sugar is kilogram is the unit okay and this unit contains 5 times the given quantity of sugar okay so this is the example or else we say that uh, take milk the quantity of milk is your 10 liters okay here we can say that unit which is used to measure the mass of the milk is your liter is a unit and this unit contains 10 times the given quantity of milk so now this physical quantity is classified into two classes one is a scalar scalar quantity quantities and the other one is a vector quantities one is a scalar quantity and another is a vector quantity so what is scalar quantity so scalar quantity is a physical quantity which has magnitude only only which has magnitude only no direction okay whereas the vector quantities are those quantities which has both magnitude as well as direction okay it has magnitude as well as direction okay so scalar quantities are those physical quantities which has magnitude only whereas the vector quantities are those physical quantities which has magnitude as well as direction parameters to measure the scalar quantity what we require to measure the parameters of the scalar quantity we require the magnitude only but the magnitude has to be magnitude means what is magnitude this is just size or amount size or amount we can say that magnitude so that means 5 kg sugar so we cannot write only 5 sugar so we have to give the unit also so the parameters for the scalar quantity is one is a unit in which the given quantity is measured and number two second parameter is the numerical value numerical value okay and similarly if the parameters if you have to see for the vector quantities so vector quantities the first two parameters are same unit second one is here numerical value value okay and third one also it has third one also because we see here vector quantity okay so magnitude as well as direction in order to define the magnitude we require unit and the numerical value okay but it also has the direction so that means the third one is a direction 
okay these are the parameters of scalar quantities and the vector quantities so let's take some example example of scalar quantities the quantities which have magnitude only mass volume time speed distance etc are the examples of scalar quantities quantities very you don't have to show any direction those are the scalar quantities so if you talk about the mass the mass of the sugar is 5 kg so we are not sensing any direction here so or else we say that the volume of the milk is 10 liter okay there also the direction is not mentioned time if you say that it's 12 o'clock we are not talking about the any direction so these kind of quantities are the scalar quantities okay and take let's take example of vector quantity displacement force velocity momentum momentum etc are the examples of the vector quantity if you say the displacement what is displacement displacement is the shortest distance between the initial and the final position of the body shortest distance means so it has some direction force has the direction velocity also we can say that weight weight is the force with which the body is pulled towards the center of the earth due to the gravity the force of gravity so momentum also okay these are the quantities wherein we will also see the direction so that means this kind of quantities are called the vector quantities every object in the universe is in motion okay the children are playing you can see the birds are flying the vehicles are running okay moon is going around the sun earth and the earth is going around the sun the sun is, even sun is going around the center of the galaxy and even we know that the galaxies are also not at rest it's everything in this universe are in motion but if we look at the stone which is lying on the ground which will not move unless we apply external force the book is lying on the table the tree which will be in the same place always the uh, buildings houses which are not moving okay but if you know the fact that earth is going around the sun so that you mean earth is going around the sun means earth is in motion okay if earth is in motion that means anything which is lying on the earth are in motion okay so that means we can see that objects are not moving when we compare that object with other object then only we can say that the something is at rest okay and that's why this rest and motion are relative terms relative terms they are not absolute terms okay they are relative terms so how do you define the rest rest any uh, an object is said to be at rest when it does not change its position with respect to its surroundings okay with respect to surroundings surrounding so that means we have to compare relate with each other similarly if we say motion what is motion an object is said to be in motion or an object is said to be in motion when it does change its position with respect to its surroundings we have to write with respect to its surroundings okay so when we compare then only we will get the definition of the rest and the motion now one dimensional dimensional motion or we can also call rectilinear motion so how do we define the one dimensional motion or rectilinear motion recti means straight linear means line so straight line so that means motion motion of an object in a straight line okay motion of an object in a straight line is rectilinear motion it's called the rectilinear motion or one dimensional motion let's take some example a car is okay we have a car and the car is moving in a straight path okay or a straight road this is a straight a straight path 
is an example of rectilinear motion. Okay, or <coughs> you say that the stone is thrown vertically upwards is the example of rectilinear motion. The bullet is fired from a gun. So when the bullet is fired from a gun, it will travel in a straight line is the example of rectilinear motion. Suppose if I say that the athletes are running in an oval path, is that the example of a rectilinear motion? No. The athletes are moving in an oval path. When they are moving in an oval path here, that means they are not traveling in a straight path. Okay, they are not following the straight path. That means this is not an example of rectilinear motion. Or if you say that while playing a game of cricket, okay, batsman hits the six. Okay, suppose this is a pitch. From here it hits the six here. Path followed by the ball is this, which is not a straight line. The motion of the ball here is also not an example of a rectilinear motion. Whenever we see that anybody which is traveling in a or which is moving in a straight path okay which is moving in a straight path or a straight line that motion is considered to be a one dimensional motion or we can call rectilinear motion let's take example we have a ball and it is thrown vertically upward so if the ball is thrown vertically upwards here and the ball reaches here in after 4 seconds. Okay. So when it is 0 second. Okay. The ball will cover how much? 0 meter. When it will reach here in 1 second. Ball will travel say 10 meter. Here in 2 second. Ball will cover how much? 20 meter. And here in 3 second. Ball will cover how much? 30 meter meter and here it will cover 40 meter this is how the ball will travel here in four second ball reaches here here if you see that ball is going right up vertically upwards in a straight path the path or the most of the, the ball here is a straight line this is the example of the motion in one dimension or rectilinear motion which we can make in the box also okay so here if you see this here this is your time time this is in second okay and then we write position of ball in meter so we can easily see from this picture when the time was zero second ball was at zero meter when the time was one second the ball reaches 10 meter distance okay in 2 seconds 20 meter distance in 3 seconds 30 meter distance in 4 seconds 40 meter distance but all these 4 seconds ball is not changing its direction it is going in a straight line the ball is moving in a straight line and this is the example of the rectilinear motion when the body is moving in a straight line then the motion of an object or the motion of a body is called rectilinear motion or one dimensional motion clear distance and displacement what is distance distance is the actual path covered by a moving body whereas displacement depends upon the initial and the final position of moving body example go to school from home if the path followed by the student is the actual path that means actual path covered is a distance and displacement depends upon the initial and the final position of the moving body so this is the straight line so which is showing the direction also so that means this red line signifies the displacement and the black curved line signifies the distance so that means from here we can say that distance is the actual path covered by a moving body whereas displacement depends upon the initial and the final position of the moving body okay so that we can say that here we can see the direction also so we can say that displacement is a vector quantity whereas distance is a scalar quantity okay because it does not have any direction unit si unit is a meter and cgs unit is a centimeter and same for the displacement also si unit is a meter and CGS unit is a centimeter. Okay, so <clears throat> then here distance is signified by 
is and displacement is by s with the arrowhead or we can write the bold letter s also this is how we represent the distance this is how we represent the displacement so if you compare the distance and the displacement okay distance and the displacement can be equal distance can be greater than the displacement okay but distance can never be less than the displacement let's take one example so if the body is moving from a to b okay and it is traveling or it is moving in a straight line okay it is if it is moving in a straight line here your distance will be equals to displacement here distance will be equals to displacement but here if you see this the body is moving from point a to point b and the body is moving in this direction okay so that means from here the body is moving here so actual path covered by a body is this actual path followed by the body is the curve line here is the distance curve line signifies the distance and if the body if you have to see the displacement this is the displacement red line is the displacement which is a straight line okay here we can say that dear distance is greater than displacement here the distance is greater than the displacement next we can see this uh, displacement can be zero when the distance is not zero when the body is traveling from a to b and again it will return back to position a only okay it will return back to the position a from here it is traveled this direction and from here again it is returning back to the same position so here initial and the final initial initial and final position of the body is same suppose this distance is a 5 meter if you see that means so here your distance is equal to 5 it's going this side and 5 it's coming back it is a 5 plus meter plus 5 meter is equal to 10 meter distance covered by a body here or distance traveled by a body here is 10 meter so let's see how much displacement will be displacement here the position it is coming initial position is a zero and the final position is also zero meter so here it is a zero meter so we can say that when the initial and the final position of the body is same then the distance covered by a body is 10 meter whereas the displacement will be zero or if the body is moving in a circular path take one complete circle this is the starting point starting point whenever body will travel in a circular path or body will travel one complete circle at that time the displacement will be zero these are the instances where the displacement will be zero the distance will never be zero so displacement can be zero but this distance can never be zero now we'll see the difference between distance and displacement okay first one is the definition distance is the actual path covered by a moving body and displacement is the shortest distance between the initial and the final position of the moving body and the second one is very easy distance is a scalar quantity displacement is a vector quantity and the third one we can say that distance can never be zero displacement can be zero okay so these are the difference between the distance and the displacement Thank you.